The Stanbic IBTC, a member of the Standard Bank Group, is a leading provider of integrated financial services based in Nigeria. Here to discuss some of the opportunities for investment in the region is Olamide Oyatan, CEO of the bank's asset management business. Olamide, welcome. Thank you, Nick. First, introduce us to Stanbic IBTC, what you offer your customers and what makes your services unique. Stanbic IBTC is an integrated financial services um, group. Uh, so what we try to do is to offer end-to-end -end financial services. I work in the asset management um, business, and so what we focus on is you know, managing monies on behalf of retail clients and institutional clients. For the retail clients, what we do is that we try to manage them through the collection of mutual funds that we have. And we have about seven um, mutual funds. We are the largest provider of mutual funds in Nigeria currently. And then for the institutional clients, what we try to do is to understand um, what they're trying to achieve. And then we create a segregated portfolio, understand their risk um, tolerance, and try to ensure that you know, we educate them on what we are doing. Um, with respect to what makes us unique, I think as a group, uh, to my mind, we are the only group in Nigeria that offers end-to-end -end financial services uh, currently in Nigeria. So for instance, from banking services, to wealth management businesses, to you know, trustees, to custodying of assets. I mean, we do it all. And so a client with us can have his own you know, financial or investment um, needs or requirements you know, fully handled. Now, some countries in Africa are still considered fragile states. Where do you see the safer opportunities to invest on the continent? I think that um, generally, uh, apart from, say, maybe um, South Africa, which has a fairly um, mature and deep financial market, um, most markets on the African continent are considered uh, frontier. I think the bigger uh, stock exchanges are in um, South Africa, then Egypt, Nigeria. And uh, of course, because of what's happened in Egypt in the last uh, couple of years, so Nigeria is about par. But I think the thing about frontier markets um, uh, in Africa is that, first of all, the sort of investors it attracts are people that know what they're looking for. So they are sophisticated. They also understand that the markets are not as deep. So it takes time, you know, to build a sizable investment. And once you do that, you have to wait for the long term. Unlike in Europe or in the US, where you can build sizable positions in minutes and unwind almost instantaneously, that is a bit of challenge, you know, doing that in Africa. Um, I think with respect also to investing, what people have to consider is that Africa has changed and it's offering very high returns in terms of, you know, so for investors that are comfortable taking the risk, they usually make a lot disproportionate amount of returns over the long to the medium term, but you have to be in there for the medium to long term. Nigeria plans to reposition itself as a market leader in the cocoa industry. What has been done to achieve this and what does it mean for investors? Cocoa used to be one of our major exports in the 60s and early 70s until we discovered uh, crude oil in commercial quantity. And what that has done is that we've relegated every other sector, especially the agricultural sector, which constitutes about 40% of GDP, um, so what we've seen is that now the agricultural minister, who is um, seen as a reformist and a progressive um, thinker, is trying to fix the whole value chain for agriculture. And they've identified that, you know, within, you know, the northern parts of Africa, cocoa can still be produced and exported in commercial quantity. I think the challenge that we've also noticed is that there are very few large-scale um, farmers in the country. Um, you know, so what, they, what the ministers try to fix is access to credit, um, you know, access to agricultural inputs such as fertilizers, and just to ensure that the yields are attractive and that the farmers are incentivized to actually, you know, produce this um, commodity and then ensure that storage and you know, route to market is also made accessible. So optimism for investors, but what do you see as the challenges to growth in Africa? I think challenge, the major challenge um, has been infrastructure. Um, if you find, I mean, what you find is that it's difficult in Africa, I mean, to move goods, services within countries or regions. Um, I think breaking those barriers would, you know, make everybody better off uh, because trade actually make people richer. I think um, other challenges that you have um, in Africa is, you know, 
we have a few countries that have newly ele elected democratic governments and there's that danger of them slipping back um, just because um, some people do not like the outcomes of election. But what we're seeing is that most of the pair countries are now coming and saying, you know, no, people should have the right to choose. And when you then choose, hopefully the government is a lot more responsible. I think other uh, uh, um, challenges, I mean, you have in Africa, it's just, you know, raising quality of education. Access to basic um, school education is actually important. The final challenge that, you know, comes to mind about Africa or doing uh, business in, in Africa is just policy consistency, uh, sometimes from government. What we now see, and if you take Nigeria as an example, is that we've tried to break down as many barriers uh, for people where they come to invest, whether it's in, you know, um, um, in the financial markets or whether it's foreign direct investments. And you, know, you do even give um, tax holidays um, um, for um, FDIs. And I think um, that's why you are beginning to see um, a lot of interest and a lot of money coming to um, Africa in, um, in the form of foreign direct investments. And so what is Stanbic and your own business line doing to accommodate these challenges? We see ourselves as a gateway into you know, the African markets. And what we try um, to do to resolve some of the challenges is to work I mean, with the governments, the regulators, policy makers, and try to tell them, you know, what they can do to impact society or to for the country as well. So we see ourselves as, you know, our roots is in Africa and our prosperity is in Africa. So as much as possible, we try to ensure that we are partnering with, you know, the critical stakeholders. Um, so it could be, you know, trying to project manage a port a railway uh, facility, advising on a privatization mandate. Um, so things that will make, um, you know, meaningful impact. And um, we can only be as successful as our clients or, you know, as the society we are in. Olamide, thank you. Thank you very much, Nick.